Hi, uh, the next notebook is going to be about dimensionality reduction. And if you've heard the, dimension, the term dimensionality or reduction before, uh, you would have probably heard of the term maybe PCA or TSNI as a common dimensionality reduction technique or UMAP. And this notebook is really just specifically working on these three uh, ways to do dimensionality reduction on data. Often with dimensionality reduction, usually the goal is to come up with like a 2D visualization of your data where every element in your data is, or every dot in your plot is um, representing one of the observations and you could start seeing some patterns there and that's how uh, things could become interesting. So for this notebook, we're gonna cover again these three main uh, methods. So I've already loaded, oh, yeah, I've already loaded these packages here that we will use in each of them has a certain, um, yeah, has a certain purpose. So let's, um, yeah, let's keep going. Actually, this notebook's already run, but that's okay. We can run it again. Uh, so the first thing we'll do is call the data frame on this package, on this data set we're going to call from this package called Vega data sets. Uh, it's over here. Um, it's a cars data set where each row, uh, each row in the cars is um, um, car name with a few specifications about uh, that specific car. Uh, so we can actually, so the first thing we're going to do here is drop the missings just because we don't want to deal with all the cars that could have missing values. Um, so we're going to drop the missings. We're going to get the matrix because we're going to play around with these numbers because we need them as matrices here to pass them to uh, functions like the PCA and uh, tease me and so on. And uh, one thing we will use later is the origin of these cars. Um, so we're just storing them here. Uh, let me actually copy these and do them in a different cell just for ease of readability. Uh, so, okay, so what's going on here is we've taken um, the columns two through se two th through seven, which are uh, miles per gallon up until uh, acceleration, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so these are the specifications we are caring about in this case. And then the next thing we're doing here is that we're calling, um, so car origin is just um, a string or a vector of uh, all the origins that these cars came from. Uh, so they're going to be actually strings, but what we will see later is we want to come up with some sort of a mapping between the strings and numbers, kind of create a unique ID for every uh, one of these years. So one way we can do it is via the label map uh, function from mlbase.jl package. Uh, so this is um, from mlbase. Okay, so now instead of having actual strings of these uh, car origins, we have something called unique IDs, and uh, these unique IDs are now uh, the numbers, um, you, the, the mapping, the, the unique ID of a certain uh, origin. Okay, so we got the data ready, we dropped the missing, we know which matrix we're gonna use for dimensionality reduction, it's this matrix M, and then we got uh, some unique IDs out of the car origins, which we will you will see how we will use later. All right, so the next thing we will do is start running these methods on our data sets. Uh, so the first thing we're actually gonna do with the data is um, normalize and standardize this data. So um, the way we do it is just a common thing we do before passing this type of data to dimensionality reduction is just dividing by the mean uh, and, um, uh, sorry, subtracting the mean of each uh, uh, row and then dividing by uh, the standard deviation. Uh, so here, if I actually um, get the mean, so just because we're using this dimensionality term for the first time. So if I get the mean of the data, um, Sorry, yeah, so did I say row or column? I forgot, but anyway, so um, here what you're doing is you're getting for each, like each of these features, uh, you're getting the mean of it and uh, you're gonna get the standard uh, deviation. And the reason you wanna do that is because sometimes the features could be, like sometimes one feature set could be very, um, like between zero and one and another feature set could be like between 100 and 1000. And you don't wanna, one of them, like, be dominant over the other one. So, so one quick way to do it is uh, via normalizing the data in this way. All right, so this is setting up the data. And then 
Uh, actually, PCA ex uh, expects uh, to pass the data as the observations being each column and the features being each row. So we're just going to um, kind of transpose the data to get it ready for PCA. Uh, so now we're going to use the fit function um, from um, multivariate stats. So that's where we're using PCA from. Um, so yeah, we're passing fit. This is the fit function, and then PCA is what we're trying to fit. The data we're passing is the transpose, just because that's how it's expecting it to be. The max uh, out dimension is going to be two, just because we're trying to do a two-dimensional um, layout of our data. Uh, P is the projection matrix, where like if you've actually worked with PCA before, you know there's a projection matrix that once you multiply it by your data is what you actually um, get as the um, um, new dimensionality reduction of your data. Uh, so here, one quick way to do it is actually if we go back to um, this data that we've used here and we multiply P transpose by it, that's how uh, we've done a dimensionality reduction on uh, that specific uh, row. Uh, if we actually transform the data, it's just passing the P uh, value we've obtained here as a PCA fitting function, and then we're passing the data transpose, we will actually get the two-dimensional uh, fit uh, using PCA on this data. Notice that I think, yeah, the first column here should it is the same as this column here. All right, so moving on, we can also call the reconstruct function, which allows us to go back from uh, the small dimension or the, 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 the lower dimension we just created with PCA to go back to uh, six dimensions in this case. Uh, the only thing is that this problem going back is kind of ill-defined. Uh, so we won't have exactly the same values we had before, but it's going to be uh, kind of uh, close or approximate. But anyway, this is uh, this is just going back in the opposite direction. But for now, yeah, so this is not going to be the same. Um, but for now, we don't care about the opposite direction. Specifically, we care about the forward direction where we take um, these six dimensions and we're trying to make them two dimensions and uh, create a layout of your data. So here's a quick scatter plot after we found these two dimensions of the data. And um, for now, I'm just using the same exact color, uh, but for the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to label them by uh, state or sorry, by origin. Uh, so here USA is the blue colors and uh, Japan and Europe are orange and green respectively. And each car is really a dot here. And so far, like we can immediately see an interesting pattern here. And that is um, there's as if there's two clusters of blue and these are the USA cars and then there's a cluster of kind of everything together um, or a few, essentially Japan and Europe and a couple or a few of the uh, blue cars that were in the other two clusters. That's interesting. So we'll try and see if this is actually the same pattern in other forms of uh, dimensionality reduction. Okay, so let's actually take a quick look on how to do this in three dimensions. We can do the same exact thing, except we can get the max out dimension to be three. So that here, the plot is gonna like, we still kind of see that pattern, but it's not super clear. That's a scatter 3D function from the plots.jl package. Uh, but I imagine if people wanna create a 3D plot, they're usually interested in like having a GUI to play around with the uh, 3D plot. So one way to easily do that in Julia is using the Mackie um, package. So if you do Mackie.scatter and then you pass three uh, vectors, immediately you're going to create a three-dimensional um, um, layout of your uh, data. And then if you actually do the display scene here, it should show you, uh, let's see if it's going to, yeah, I think it should be, um, let's see, let's do it again. Oh, here. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's because I think I already had it. So, um, yeah, the way to do it is, um, yeah, now my laptop's not going to like this so much just because I have so many things running. Um, but so here you can, oh, yeah, so it's taking, it's lagging off a little bit. I'm running Zoom and Face, uh, sorry, and um, uh, screen recording and a lot of things to get these videos <laughs> up and running. So that's why. 
Uh, but anyway, you can already see some sort of pattern here, which we already saw in the previous case, where here you have the dots again, dots, and then a cluster that has all three colors together, uh, even in a three-dimensional um, dimensionality reduction. All right, so with the 3D I just wanted really to show you, you could do three-dimensional dimensionality reduction on um, your data. So it doesn't, have, doesn't just need to be two-dimensional as dimensionality reduction. Uh, so here I'm going to show you the next, for the rest of this notebook, we're going to do TSNI and UMAP. Uh, so for TSNI, I do have another notebook that actually, oh, it open it. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. It does have another, I do have another notebook um, that has uh, a few ways to run TSNI from uh, Julia. Um, there's this tsne.jl package, there's other things, but for here I'm using the scikit version uh, just because I think for here, yeah, I was trying, so yeah, the caveat here is that the code is a little outdated, so my code actually updates the package, but I don't think the pull request was merged, so let's just work on the thing that, like, works right off the bat without you doing any extra effort and that is going to be the scikit um, package tsne so the easiest way to do it here is to import it via the sk underscore import macro and once you've imported it all you have to do is create a tsne object with number of components is equal to two because that's the dimensionality we want and then we can uh, fit transform the data so we're fitting and then transforming um, and then we can create a scatter plot of the same uh, data we have just uh, used. So that's Y2. Uh, here, note that the format is a little different. Each observation has to be a row and not a column. Uh, so that's the um, main difference here. So we don't need to pass a transpose. Um, again, here it's you can see that the data is even more apparently kind of separated by blue. Uh, and green and orange. The so green and orange are mostly here. There's maybe it's just a few that are here, and this is entirely blue. So I don't know enough about cars, but if you do, I strongly encourage you to look at these clusters and try and find out why is this dimensionality reduction doing this on these cars. So I don't have the background information to find out, and I would love to find out. <laughs> Okay, so moving on is the UMAP uh, dimensionality reduction method. And here uh, we are going to use the UMAP package. And it's pretty straightforward. What we're doing here is finding. Oh, so for UMAP, what you need to pass for um, uh, the function is uh, kind of a distance matrix between um, your data. So here I'm creating the correlation between data and data. Uh, on dimensionality too. So every element in L is going to be the correlation uh, between um, between car one and car two. So car one and car one has the highest correlation and so on. Uh, another way you could do it is, I mean, it depends on, yeah, so I think I have different ways here. It depends on what um, kind of distances are interesting for your data. Here it's cars data. So like I, I wasn't 100% sure what really makes sense to use it as a distance uh, metric. So I'm using two things here. This is first the correlation, just how correlated two things are. Um, and then I'm calling UMAP on the distance matrix between them. And now I have the embedding. And then I'm just going to do a scatter plot. Again, we're seeing very similar pattern, except this is closer to this here. Um, if I do the same thing with pairwise distance via the distances.jl package where I'm just doing a Euclidean uh, distance between things, um, between every element. So if I actually do L here, yeah, so um, yeah, this is kind of the opposite. So um, actually, let me try and do minus L here. Uh, so if I do minus L. I bet the plot is still going to be almost the same. Yeah. So, yeah, again, very similar pattern. You have cluster here, cluster here, and then cluster there. So if you do have any background on cars and any uh, background information about cars, I'd love to find out why this is happening. Uh, so, yeah, finally, I hope you can check off all of these checkboxes here, and I hope uh, you find that interesting, that cars in the U.S. form these two clusters and cars in... Uh, Europe and Japan kind of go together. 
Thank you. We'll meet in the next notebook.